Today I read from Matthew chapter 22, the section of Scripture where Jesus is asked, what is the greatest commandment of the law? Verse 34, But when the Pharisees had heard that he put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment of the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. On these two. This is a quote from Leviticus 19 and verse 18 is where this is found. But the Pharisees, of course, was the liberal wing of the Sanhedrin. The Sadducees, excuse me, I got that backwards. The Pharisees were the conservative wing of the Sanhedrin, and the Sadducees were the liberal wing of the Sanhedrin. And they were watching and listening so they could prove two things. One, that Jesus was not God. Two, that he would break the law and they could thus charge him and deal with him after the manner of the law. So it says tempting him. They wanted him to answer questions that possibly could get him into some serious trouble. But of course we know that Jesus is God and that he was well aware of what they were trying to do. And in their effort, Jesus would expound some great and marvelous truths. So the law, we know we commonly call it the Mosaic law. They would ask him, what is the great commandment of the law? What is the central idea of the law? That's interesting, isn't it? The law had its purpose. And that purpose was to aid Israel in their worship and their daily lives, covering everything from uh, how sacrifices were to be done, uh, their, their dietary habits, the way they would live, what would happen if someone broke the law, Everything was contained. It was a complete uh, document and complete and profound document that Israel knew exactly what God required. Well, this is the part that they didn't quite get. The fact that Jesus was there to fulfill the law and to set it aside and to take us into the age of grace. That is what they did not grasp. So they were ready, they were going to listen ever so carefully at his answer. Very carefully at his answer. And see if there was some way 
that they could they could catch him in breaking the law. But of course we know. He will tell them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Love is the most powerful thing, the most powerful motivation in worship, in service, in daily life. We live in a world where peop most, some people don't even understand what love is. But in our worship to God, in our service to God, we must begin with love. That's what brought Jesus to earth, wasn't it? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's what took him to the cross. Was the fact God commendeth his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Therein, dear hearts, it was... God's motivation was love that brought Jesus to earth, that took him to the cross, that raised him from the dead by the power of the Father. Everything involved with Lord Jesus' interaction with man was based out of love. And that love is um, offered to all, to everyone. Not some just particular folk, but everybody. God loves everyone. Okay? But thou shalt love the Lord thy God. In particular, with all. And each one of these carries the word all. So that means every part, every uh, uh, bit of your heart, your soul, in your mind, every part, not just some, but every part, okay? Jesus would say, no man can serve two masters. He will love the one, hate the other, cleave to the one, despise the other. No, you cannot serve God and mammon. We're just not designed for separate Devotions. We are designed for one. So if we would love the Lord with all of our hearts, with all of our soul, and all of our mind, that pretty well covers all of us. Okay? And then, we find the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. <laughs> that idea of how I want to be treated. When someone says or writes something about me, okay, how would, you know, how would it be? Social media is a wonderful thing in its place. But there are folk who do not use it as a means of communicating good. They like to hurt people. Well, how would they like to be treated? If we treated everyone else like I want to be treated, wouldn't that be different? Okay. If I send harsh words to someone, does that mean I expect them to do the same because to love your neighbor as yourself? If I wanted to hurt someone else, does that mean I expect someone else to hurt me? Dear ones, 
I want to advise extreme caution. Let our words be seasoned with grace. Let our words be Christ honoring and uplifting to those who read them. That's what that's what this is talking about in it. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Okay. So the great commandment, if we would love God, put him above everything else. And we would love one another. Treat one another as I would like to be treated. Would that not make a tremendous difference in the world which we live? And they had to admit that Jesus hit the proverbial nail on the head by saying, absolutely, that is exactly what it meant. They couldn't deny it. In Luke's account, the lawyer would ask, well then who is my neighbor? <laughs> to Looking to justify himself. Because he did not treat others like he wanted to be treated. Neither did the Pharisees, neither did the Sadducees. And in Luke's account, Luke chapter 15, that's when Jesus gives the prodigal son parable. So it's important that we understand that we need to love God with all of our being. And that we need to love one another. Of all places where love should be the theme. Love should be felt. Love should be expressed. It is in God's house and among God's people. Father, thank you for this day. Your love, your goodness, your mercy. Thank you for your love that transcends all understanding. For those who are recuperating from surgery, we pray your blessing. For those who are having difficulties, we ask for the comfort of your spirit and the guidance of your word. Now use us as it pleases you and forgive us where we fail. For Christ's sake I pray. Amen.